Hello everyone. The topic is tooth preparation in FPD. Now, this is a very important LAQ that you can expect in your exams. So, the teeth, they do not possess the regenerative ability. So, now for example, if you get some caries, so in that caries, what you need to do is you need to remove that caries and then you have to do the tooth preparation and then you have to fill it with the restorative material. Now, this tooth preparation is in terms of conservative dentistry, like you do the tooth preparation in the case of amalgams, composites. Now, this teeth, they also require the preparation to support the fixed partial dentures. So, you have to make an attempt that you are making a good tooth preparation if you want a good success rate for your prosthesis. So, now in this video, we are going to see about all this, like all the principles that you have to follow for the tooth preparation. Now, this tooth preparation, it can be done in the case of bridges, like you prepare the apartment and then your retainer, it goes and sit on that apartment. And you can also do this tooth preparation in case of veneers or you can do it in the case of crowns like after the root canal therapy you need to fabricate a crown so you have to do the tooth preparation in that case also so what is the definition of it so tooth preparation it is defined as the process of removal of the diseased and or healthy enamel dentine and cementum to shape a tooth to receive a restoration so tooth preparation is nothing but you're removing the diseased part in case of caries or the healthy enamel dentine in case of such bridges so this are your healthy abutments so what you do is you remove the enamel dentin and cementum so that you're shaping the tooth so that your restoration it can go and sit on this so it is to receive a restoration and this definition it is given by gpt8 now what are the principles of tooth preparation so basically there are three main principles that is biologic mechanical and aesthetic biological is the one which affects the health of the oral tissue Mechanical are the ones which affects the integrity and the durability of the restoration and aesthetic is the one which affects the appearance of the patient. Starting with the first that is the biologic principle. So now this affects the health of the oral tissue and in biologic there are three main principles that is the prevention of the damage, conservation of the tooth structure and the margin integrity. So first one is the preservation of the tooth structure. Now as the name says preservation, so that means you are preserving the tooth structure. So the three things that you need to preserve are the adjacent teeth, soft tissue and the pulp. So over here now this is the tooth which is prepared. So in that case these are your adjacent teeth. So you have to see that you are not damaging the adjacent teeth. So you have to preserve the adjacent teeth then the soft tissue that can be a gingiva, tongue, mucosa and the pulp in the cases of bridges. Now when we are fabricating a bridge so we use the abutments and we are doing the tooth preparation on those abutments. But now those abutments they can be healthy also. So you have to see that you are preserving the pulp of those teeth. Now preservation of adjacent teeth it can be done with the help of a metal matrix band. So this is the tooth which is prepared and over here what you can do is you can apply this matrix band over the tooth which is present adjacent to the tooth which is to be prepared. The next can be a use of a proximal enamel of the tooth that is to be prepared. Now this is a preferred method to avoid the damage to the adjacent teeth. So now over here the teeth, they are 1.5 to 2 mm wider at the contact area. Now over here, so these teeth, they are wider at the contact area when you're comparing it with the CJ. So there are chances that when you're doing the preparation with the help of birth, so there can are chances that you can like damage the adjacent tooth. So what you can do is you can use a thin tapered burr. So this is a thin tapered burr or a diamond and you are passing it through the interproximal contact area and you leave a slight lip of the enamel. So this is the slight or, or it is also known as a fin of enamel. So this is how you do. So first you create this fin of enamel and then you slowly remove this thin portion of the enamel so that you are not damaging the adjacent tooth. And the next is you have to avoid undesirable angulation through which you can damage the adjacent tooth. Now the next is the preservation of the soft tissue. So in this, you have to see that you're carefully retracting the soft tissue that is over here. Now you're retracting your tongue with the help of a mouth mirror or you can retract it with the help of a suction tip. And the last one is the preservation of the pulp. Now if you don't preserve the pulp, so there are like because of excessive temperature, if there are any various bacterial chemical actions, so because of that, you can damage your pulp. So you have to see that now when you're using this micro motor or the air rotor, so there is heat which is generated. So you have to preserve that pulp from that heat. So that is from the excessive heat. So you can use a water spray in that case. So over here, you can use a water spray. 
Now, in the chemical action, you have to see that you are applying a cavity varnish, and then in bacterial also, you can use a zinc phosphate cement. So, this is about the preservation that you are preserving the adjacent teeth, soft tissue, and the pulp. The next one is the conservation of the tooth structure. So that means the tooth which you are preparing, you have to conserve it and you have to prepare it as conservatively as possible. So first is you can use a partial coverage rather than using a complete coverage restoration. Now over here, this is a complete coverage and this is a partial one. So when you are doing the preparation for this partial one, so in that case, you have to prepare the tooth like comparatively, conservatively more when you are doing it for the partial coverage. The next one is the preparation of the teeth with minimal practical taper. Now what this taper is, so we are going to see about this in the mechanical principles. So over here, this is nothing but the difference between the taper. So taper is nothing but the angulation. Like in amalgam, we do the convergence. So we are giving that taper. So over here, this is the taper. So in this case, like when you want to conserve the tooth structure, so you have to prepare the teeth with minimum taper, which is possible. The next one is the preservation of the occlusal surface following the anatomic planes. So now, however, your anatomy of the tooth is, so you have to follow that properly. So you have to prepare the occlusal surface depending or following the anatomic planes only. The next one is the selection of the conservative finish line, which is compatible with the type of restoration. Now, what are these finish lines we are going to see in the later part of this video? So, there are basically various types of finish line. So, you have to select one of the finish line, which is compatible with the type of restoration that you are doing. Whether it is a ceramic or metal or ceramic metal. So, you have to depend. So, depending on that, you have to do the preparation. The next one is the avoidance of the subgingival margins unless it is indicated. Now again, what are the subgingival margins we are going to see? The next one is the you have to prepare the axial surface evenly using the depth orientation groove and a proper width of the diamond points. So when you are doing the preparation of the axial surface, so it should be like evenly prepared. So these are the points that you need to remember for the conservation of the tooth structure, like how you can conserve the tooth which is to be prepared. And the last principle for this biological one is the margin integrity. So in this margin integrity, first we are going to see what exactly margin and finish lines are. So margin, it is the outer edge of the crown inlay, onlay or any other restoration. Now this is the crown that you are going to prepare on this apartment. So margin is nothing but the edge of this. So this now you can see over here, this yellow portion is your artificial crown or it can be inlay, onlay or any other restoration. So margin is basically the outer edge of this crown. Now, what is a finish line? So, finish line, it is the terminal portion or the peripheral extension of the prepared tooth. Now, this is the tooth preparation that you are doing. So, finish line is nothing but the terminal portion over here. So, now over here, now you can see this is a finish line and margin. So, margin is basically the term which is related to the crown and finish line is a term which is related to the prepared tooth. So, the margins of the restoration, they lie on the prepared finish line. So now over here, now you can see the margins, they are lying on this finish line. So the junction is in the form of a space or a gap and it is most vulnerable part of the restoration. As the cement joining the restoration to the tooth, it is exposed to the oral environment only in this area. So you have to make the effort that this gap, it is reduced as much as possible. So now over here, this is the junction. So this junction, you'll see that there's a gap or a space which is present at this junction. And this is like very vulnerable point because if this gap is very much, so there are chances that like caries can accumulate in this area. So because of that, you have to see that you are reducing this space as much as possible. So now this margin integrity, it is determined by three factors. So the first factor is the margin placement. Now we know what exactly is the margin. So in this now margin placement, it can be of three types. That can be a supragingival, equigingival or subgingival. Now supragingival, it is above the gingival crest. Equi, it is the margins they are placed at the level of the gingival crest and subgingival is it is placed below the gingival crest now this is your gingival crest so now this first one is now you can see your margin so this is the crown and over here this point is your margin on the crown which is your, which you have prepared so in this subgingival will be when your margin it will be below this gingival crest over here now you can see the margins and the crest they are at the same level so this becomes the equigingival and subgingival will be this one and supra will be this when your margin it is above the crest and sub will be when your margin it is below the crest 
So now what are the advantages of the supra gingival? So first is now your margins it is placed on the enamel. Then it is easy to prepare without causing any trauma to the tissue. Then it is it can be easily finished. Now this is present now you can easily see this because now when you do the preparation sub gingivally. So it becomes like it is done below the gingiva. So it becomes very difficult to do the preparation for that. So in this supra gingival it becomes very easy. Then the impression making is also less traumatic. The fit of the restoration, it can be easily evaluated and it can be maintained easily by the patient. So these all are the advantages for the supra gingival one. Now, what is the sub gingival margins? So the margins, they are described when the aesthetic is of the most important part. Now, when you're placing the crown, so when your crown, it goes into the gingiva, so it is aesthetically pleasant. Whereas over here, it is not that good aesthetically when you're comparing it with sub gingival one. So in this, the deeper the restoration margin is in the sulcus, greater is the chance of the inflammatory response. So this is the disadvantage when you are doing it for the subgingival that there can be the chances of inflammatory response. So in this, like the subgingival one, they are mostly avoided unless it is very much indicated. So you mostly you have to go for the supragingival only. So in this, it is placed at least 2 mm above the alveolar crest so that the biologic width it is not encroached. So when you're doing this sub gingival one, so you have to see that you're placing it. So you're placing the margins at least 2 mm above the alveolar crest. Now, what are the indications like where exactly you need to go for the sub gingival one? So it can be when the caries or the erosion or the restoration, they're extending sub gingivally. So for that, you have to do the preparation margin placement sub gingivally. The next can be in the case of aesthetics. So this is the most important thing. The next can be when you need additional retention where there is short ground. So in that case, you have to go for sub -gingival. Then there can be root sensitivity. So in that case, also you're going for sub -gingival. Then it can be the proximal contact, which is extending to the gingival crest. So in that case, also you have to go for the sub -gingival. So this is the first point that is the margin placement. Margin placement, it can be of three types. So now depending on the case, you have to do the placement of the margin. Now, the next factor which determines the margin integrity is the margin geometry. So, the first one was the margin placement. So, the placement, it can be of three types. So, depending on the criteria, you have to see whichever the placement is. The next one is the margin geometry. So, this margin geometry, it refers to the shape or the configuration of the prepared finish line. Now, we know what finish line is. So, finish line is nothing but the terminal portion of your prepared tooth. So, now this shape or the configuration of the Finish line, it is like of various types and this is the margin geometry. So it should possess the following characteristics. So now this margin geometry, it should have this characteristic that is it should be easy to prepare. It should be easy to identify like when you're making that finish line. Now this finish line, it is very thin. So it should be like it should be easily identifiable. The next one can be the distinct border. So it is like when you're doing the finish line preparation, so it should be having a distinct boundary. The next is it should have sufficient strength and it should have like it should conserve the tooth structure. So this is about the margin geometry. So now starting with the finish line configuration. Now there are various types of finish line. Now which type of finish line you have to use? It depends on the type of restoration that you're doing. So there are like various advantages, disadvantages and indication for each type of finish line. So this finish line, it fits as closely to the finish line to minimize the exposed cementum. Then this finish line, it should have sufficient strength to withstand the force of mastication. It should not be like when you're masticating. So this finish line, it gets fractured. So you have to make such finish lines that they can like accommodate all the strength to withstand such forces. Then it should be located where the dentist in care inspect them and the patient can clean them. So it should be like the finish line. It should be made such that the dentist, they can easily recognize where they are. Now, what are the fin functions of finish line? So it is major of the tooth structure that has been removed. So you get to know like how much tooth structure is removed. The next is it is used to measure the accuracy of an impression. Then to help to evaluate a dye and a trim accurately. Then for the proper fabrication and for the evaluation of the restoration, which is helped in the determination of the restoration if it is set properly or not. So these are like the functions of the finish line. Now there are various types of finish line that are the camphor, heavy camphor, shoulder, sloping shoulder, radial shoulder, shoulder with bevel, knife edge and chisel edge. So we are going to see each one of them because now this is also very commonly asked as a SAQs also. 
So now this finish line, it is classified according to the width. So when the marginal width, it is less than 0.3 mm. So there is this knife edge. If the marginal width, it is up to 0.3 mm, then you're giving this camphor. Then if the marginal width, it is greater than 0.3, then you're using this shoulder type of finish line. So starting with the first one, that is a camphor. So GPT, they defined camphor line as it is a finish line which is designed for the preparation in which the gingival aspect, it meets the external axial surface at an obtuse angle. So when the angle, it is more than 90 degrees, so that is your camphor. So like this is a slide, like an example of slide in which the angulation of the slide, it is more than 90 degree. So when you do this finish line, so in this finish line, the angle, it is more than 90 degree. So now what are the advantages of this camphor? So in this, the margins, they are distinct. Then it provides adequate bulb and it is easily controllable. Then what are the disadvantages? So you have to see that you are avoiding the unsupported lip of enamel. And what are the indications for this camphor? Like when are you indicating a camphor type of finish line? So it can be in the case of cast metal restoration and in the case of lingual margin of the metal ceramic. So when you're using or when you're fabricating a metal ceramic crown, so in the lingual margin of it, you are indicating or you're making this camphor type of finish line in which you make the line so you make the preparation and on this finish line at an obtuse angle and the burrs which can be used in this camphor can be a round end taper burr now the next one is the heavy camphor so it provides 90 degree cable surface angle with a large radius rounded internal angle so again heavy camphor is over here now this angulation it is more rounded off so this is a heavy camphor when it is more a uh, obtuse angle then a bevel it can be added to a heavy camphor for your use with a metal restoration so when you have to do it so when the finish line is to be done on the metal restoration then what you can do is a bevel can be added to this heavy camphor now what are the advantages so in this there is a better support for the ceramic crown then disadvantage is unskilled operator they can create an undesirable fragile lip of the enamel at the cable surface which is prone to the fracture of it now what are the indication for this heavy camphor so when are you using this heavy camphor type of finish line so it can be in the case of ceramic and when you have to give it like the crown is to be given in a metal crown but it should be given with a bevel and the burr which you are using in this is a round end taper now this is the heavy camphor over here so when the angulation of this it is increased and it is rounded off so that is a heavy camphor the next one is the shoulder. So this finish line, it is a choice for all ceramic crowns. Then it provides the resistance to the occlusal forces and it provides the space for the healthy restoration contours and it provides maximum aesthetics. So now as it is indicated in the all ceramic, so all ceramic crowns are used when aesthetic is of the most important thing. So basically your shoulder type of finish line, it provides the maximum aesthetics. Now this again, it is done with the help of flat and taper and the angulation, it is 90 degree over here. So shoulder is when the angulation is 90 degree over here. Now you can see. So what are the advantages? So first is bulk of the restorative material. The next is disadvantages are it is less conservative and there are chances that they can cause coronal fracture. Now because this is 90 degree, so it is a sharp angle. So there are chances that there can be coronal fractures. Now what are the indications? So indication is it is used in a ceramic crown, complete ceramic or it can be used in the facial margin of the metal ceramic crown so these are the indication for the shoulder now the next one is the radial shoulder so it is nothing but a modification of the shoulder type of finish line so it supports for the ceramic restoration is good but yes the most important or this choice of finish line for all ceramic is the shoulder one so now what are the advantages so in this now it is not a sharp angle now over here you can see the angulation it is not a sharp angulated one so radial is like a radius of a circle so you're just like rounding it off so that now when you have seen in the shoulder so that was a disadvantage that it can lead to coronal fracture so to prevent that what you do is you use this radial shoulder so the advantage is stress concentration which is lesser than the classic shoulder disadvantage again it is less conservative and indication is same which is for the shoulder so when you see that whenever the forces are too much so you can use a radial shoulder one now these are the various types of burrs that you can use again a flat end taper then the end cutting carbide finishing burr and a modified bind angle chisel can be used in the case of this radial shoulder
The next one is the shoulder with bevels. Now, what are the uses for this? Like where exactly do you indicate this shoulder with bevels? So, a gingival finish line on the proximal box of inlays and onlays, occlusal shoulders of onlays. So, basically, you're giving beveling in the case of inlays and onlays. And then it can also be used for extremely short walls and where there is more destruction of the tooth. So, in that case, what you do is you give a bevel on it. So, bevel is nothing but an angulation which you're giving in the finish line. So, over here, this is the beveling of it. So, there are like this two angles which are given. So, what are the advantage? Again, the bulk of material. Disadvantage, less conservative. And indication is, it is basically used in the facial margin of the posterior metal ceramic crown with supra gingival margin. And it is basically used mostly in the inlays and onlays. Now, the next one is the knife edge. So, the ultimate finish line that permits an acute margin of the metal. So, in this, the angulation, it is less than 90 degree. Now, we have seen in shoulder, it is 90 degree. In camphor, it is more than 90. Now, knife edge is when the angulation, it is an acute angle when it is less than 90 degree. Now, what are the uses? So, first is it is used in the lingual surface of the mandibular posterior teeth. Then, it can be used in very convex axial surfaces when the axial surfaces, they are very convex. So, in such cases, you have to go for such finish line that is a knife edge type. Then, the surface which is towards which the tooth is tilted. So, these are like the uses or the indication for your knife edge. Now, what is the disadvantages of this knife edge? So, in this, the axial reduction, it may fade out. Thin margin, it is difficult to wax and over contour restoration can be a disadvantage of this knife edge type. And the next one is the sloping shoulder. So, a 120 degree slope shoulder margin, it is used as an alternative to a 90 degree shoulder in the cases of facial margin of the metal ceramic crown. Now, it reduces the possibility of leaving the unsupported enamel due to which there is fracture. So, in the shoulder, we have seen this advantage. The main disadvantage was the fracture. So, you are giving a 120 degree angulation to this slope. So, instead of giving a 90 degree slope, you are giving a 120 degree slope. So, this is nothing but a sloping shoulder. So, it reduces the possibility. Then it provides a sufficient bulk to allow the thinning of the metal framework to a knife edge for the acceptable aesthetics. So, what it means that now you can provide sufficient bulk on this finish line because of which what you can do is you can thin out the metal framework. So, this is the advantage. The disadvantage again, it is less conservative like when you are doing this finish line preparation of this like shoulder ones. So, they are less conservative. That means the finish line which are prepared, they are too much. The indication is like the facial margin of the metal ceramic crown. So, this is like the same indication for your shoulder. And the last one is the chisel edge. So, it is nothing but a variation of the knife edge or a feather edge type of finish line. And it is used when there is the angulation between the axial surface and the unprepared tooth surface is more. And the last factor which determines the margin integrity is the margin adaptation. So, we have seen about like two factors which determines the integrity that was the margin placement, whether it is supra, sub or equigingival, then about the margin geometry that is like about the different finish line. And the last is this margin adaptation. So, the junction or the space which is present between a cemented restoration and the tooth, it is always a potential site for the recurrent caries or the periodontal disease. So, over here, this is the gap which we have seen like this is the margin and this is the finish line. So, there is the gap which is present. Now, this gap it is very prone or it is a very potential site for caries. Now, I have already said about that. So, because of this, if the space is very much, so there can be caries, periodontal disease and because of that, you have to see that whenever you are making this, so you have to conserve it or you have to fill this space as much as possible. Hence, preparing a smooth and even margin is beginning of the various steps. So, you have to see that first, you, when you are doing the tooth preparation, so you have to see that the margin that you are preparing, it should be smooth and it should be even. And this margin only, it will determine the various other steps, what you are going to do for the fixed processes like fabrication. That are your tooth displacement, impression making, die formation. So these are like the various steps which are involved in the fixed dental processes fabrication. And your margin, it will determine all these other steps. Then clinically acceptable marginal gap, it is 10 microns for the cast metal and it is up to 50 microns. So this gap, it should be like around 10 microns only for the cast metal and it can be up to 50 microns for the ceramic ones. So this is the gap which you can see. So the discrepancy in the adaptation, it can have horizontal and the vertical component. So over here, now you can see this one is the horizontal component 
and this one is the vertical component. So there are these two components which determine whether the margin it is over or it is under extended. So these is like are the factors about the margin integrity. So this is all about the biological principles of the tooth preparation. Now already you can see the video is too long. So because of that, I am breaking this video into two parts. So I'm going to cover about the mechanical and the aesthetic one in the next part of this video. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, then please like, comment, share and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.